Hello everyone, welcome to Talent Sprint and welcome to this general studies course called Waves, Tides and Ocean Currents of Geography. Okay, so what do you know about waves, tides and ocean currents? Are they same or are they different? Yes, are they different? Or are they same? Yes, they are different. Yes, so now we shall deal with the waves, tides and ocean currents in detail. So first, we shall deal with the introduction. The major movements of the ocean waters are divided into three categories. What are those? The first is waves, the next is tides and next is ocean currents. So what is the major difference between them? The waves and the ocean currents are the horizontal movements and the tides are the vertical movements of the ocean water. So this is the major difference between waves, tides and ocean currents. Waves and ocean currents are the horizontal movements of water but the tides are the vertical movements of water. So moving on to the waves first. So first we shall see waves, then tides, then ocean currents. Okay. So first what is a wave? So wave is nothing but it is an oscillatory movement of the ocean water with the rise and fall of the water. The rise of the fall, the rise of the water is called as crest. The fall of the water is called as trough. Okay. And this is the horizontal movement of the ocean water. Don't think it is vertically rising. It is moving in the x direction. Okay, it is a horizontal movement of water. Waves always move in horizontal direction from one place to another, not in vertical direction. Okay, and they are actually the energy, but not the water which moves from one place to another. The particle will come to the same place after taking part in a wave. Okay, that we shall see in the diagram. Okay, in the waves only energy travels from one place to another but not the water. Don't think the water will move from one place to another. It is not the displacement. There is only distance. Okay, because it is coming back again to the same point. That's why there is no movement. There is only the movement of energy. Okay, and the next the energy for the wave is provided by the wind which is blowing. I have already discussed in the uh, atmosphere topic or the winds, the climate of the world topic, I have discussed what are the various types of winds. So winds provide the energy to the waves. Okay, And the movement of each water is always circular in manner. When it starts from one point, it will come back to the same point. That's why there is a, no movement of water from one place to another, but there is only the movement of energy in the water. Okay. And wave has two parts that is the rise of the water is called as crest and the fall of the water is called as trough. Okay, you can see in the diagram the rise is called crest and the fall is called trough. You can see the particle it will come back to the same position after taking a circular path. Okay, so that's why there is no movement of water from one place to another in the wave. There is only the movement of energy. Okay, so understood what is a wave? Okay. Moving on to the tides. So what are tides? So how are they different from waves? So tides are nothing but there are they are the periodical rise and fall of water and also they are the vertical movement of water. They are not the horizontal movement but the vertical movement but waves are horizontal movement. Okay and they are caused because of the gravitation pull of between the sun, earth and the moon. Okay when they are in different directions or different positions, the different types of tides are formed. Okay, we shall see what are those tides. So understood clearly what is a tide. So among the gravitation pull between sun, moon and earth, as the moon is nearby to the earth, the gravitation pull of the moon is greater than the others, particularly than this sun. Because sun is pulling the earth and moon is also pulling the earth, but moon is nearer to the earth than the sun. That's why moon's gravitational pull is more than the sun. Okay. And the, on the other side, the centrifugal, because earth is evolving in the anti-clockwise direction, okay, around the sun, so it, it experiences centrifugal force also. Okay. On the other side, we have the sun's gravitation pull as well as centrifugal force, which will counterbalance each other so that the earth will be in its orbit. Okay, so particular reason for the uh, tides is because of the gravitation pull between sun, moon and earth. 
and out of them the highest gravitation pull is of moon because it is nearer to the earth. Next, so you can see in the diagram, so when the earth, sun, moon and on to the left side, when the earth, sun, moon and are in the same direction, see that uh, there is a pull towards the moon, the earth is pulled towards the moon. Okay, so the pull will be more because sun is also in the same direction. That's why in these direction we have high tides on both sides. Okay, centrifugal force will be pulling on the other side to maintain the equilibrium. Okay, so on these two sides we have high tides, on the other two sides we have low tides because there will be a bulge because of adjacent pulling. Okay, so two high tides, two low sides. On the horizontal direction, we have two high tides. In the vertical direction, we have two low tides. Okay, understood what is high tide and low tide. And during the other position, the first position is called CZ position. When the sun, moon and earth are in straight line. Okay, and the next position is the opposition position. When the sun, moon and earth are in right angle to each other. So, as the moon's pull is greater than the sun's pull, so where the moon is present on which direction the moon is present so moon will be pulling more so on this direction we have high tides on the other direction where the sun is pulling because its gravitation pull is low we have low tides on this direction so what happens to the waters when there is high tide and low tide you can simply go through this example see what is a low tide and what is a high tide so high tide means the beach is covered with water right as there is a greater pull, the water will expand or spread to the lower areas when there is pull. When there is lower pull that is at low tide, there is no water you can see. Okay. Sometimes you, when you see at the beach, there will be a lot of water. Sometimes there will be low water. So when there is high waters, it is called as high tide. When there is low, low water, it is called as low tide. So understood? high tides and low tides. Next we shall see the classification of tides. So first classification is based on the frequency when they will occur, how many times they occur in a month or a day etc. So in this we have again division. The first is semi diurnal tide. So what do you mean by semi diurnal tide? So semi diurnal tide means there will be two high tides and two low tides in a day. That means two plus two in a day that is called semi diurnal tides and next is diurnal tides we have one high tide and one low tide in a day and next is mixed tide there will be different heights of tides okay that is called mixed tide so these are the three types of classifications in the, the types of tides in on the basis of frequency how many times they will occur in a day or month etc and the next classification of tides is based on the position of the sun moon and the earth okay so first under this we have spring tides and the next is neap tides so what do you mean by spring tides i've already told you when the earth moon and sun are in straight line okay sometimes moon will be in the middle of sun and earth sometimes earth will be in the middle of sun and moon so these are the two positions possible in a straight line so when they are in straight line we get spring tides. The tides which are formed are called as spring tides when they are in straight line. So when does this happen? It happens only on full moon and new moon. Full moon is called as Purnima or Pournami and new moon is called as Amavasya. Okay, these are generally 15 days gap. So we can see spring tides twice a month. Okay, this is very important. Spring tides occurs twice a month because of the positions of sun and moon and earth. So understood what is spring tide and the next categorization is neap tides. So neap tides means when they are at right angles to each other. Okay. So after the spring tide has formed with seven days gap, we will be having the right angle position. Okay. So the same position. So such type of tides during when the sun, earth and moon are in right angles to each other, they are called as neap tides again two positions is possible right in a month so you can see what is a spring tide when they are in straight line when the earth is in middle and in the second position when the moon is in the middle okay spring tides happen that is called cz position when they are in straight line and 
when they are at right angles to each other that is called opposition position we have neap tides so understood where the moon is pulling we have the high tides that means water level increases at that places and they are at the other position that is we will be having low tides because there will be a bulge because of the pull on the other side okay so understood what is high tide low tide spring tides and neap tides so now we shall see so when does the tidal ranges will be higher when the earth is very nearby to the sun or when the moon is very nearby to the sun we have higher tidal ranges when earth is far away from the sun or when the moon is far away from the earth we have the lesser tidal ranges okay and next we shall see some terminology related to tide tides that is ebb and flow or flood okay the time between the high tide and the low tide when the water level is falling is called as ebb okay so the time between the high tide and low tide understood so now there is a high tide so after a gap of 7 days there will be a low tide so that gap of becoming high tide to low tide is called as ebb and from low tide to high tide the water level increases again 7 days it will take right that is called flow or flood you can easily say when the water level is ri rising flow or flood the opposite will be falling will be ebb okay and what are the advantages of tides tides will help Uh, the fisherman or the persons who are sailing on boats in navigation to navigate okay and the second is uh, it will be a good place for harbors harboring the ships or etc and good place for fishing too and they are also helping the uh, desilting the sediments right cleaning away the sediments inside the ocean waters okay so these are the main advantages of tides so next we will move on to the third category in our topic that is ocean currents So I already have told you, waves and ocean currents are horizontal movement of water, and tides are vertical movement of water. Okay. So what are these ocean currents? Ocean currents are nothing but they are rivers in the oceans. They are river-like movements. What does a river do? It will move from one place to another, right? From A point to B point. Whenever there is a gradient, right? So now the gradient is provided by some factors. I'll tell I'll tell you what is a gradient. generally a slope will make a river to flow from one place to another right yes or no there there should be a downward slope then only the river can flow if there is an upward slope it can't flow right so how the gradient is provided for the ocean currents so ocean currents are nothing but they are river flow in the oceans and they represent a regular volume of water moving from one place to another in waves and tides there is no movement of water i have already told you but in ocean currents there is a movement of water from one place to another the water will move from one place to another but not in waves and tides okay so what causes these ocean currents to move waves are moved by the wind tides are move, uh, caused because of the gravitation pull between sun moon and earth and ocean currents are taking place because of these factors the first is heating by solar energy so when the sun heats the water the temperature of that water of that region will increase and the corresponding region will be having at lower regions so there will be a pressure difference okay so always there will be movement from high pressure to low pressure areas right yes or no so on next wind will move from one place to another because of gravity that is due to slope there will be a movement and next is coriolis force i have already told you what is coriolis force it is a movement of the earth on its own axis because of its own axis rota rotation on its own axis the particles around it will also rotate okay so it will also cause the water to move from one place to another so these factors will help the ocean currents from to move from one place to another understood waves and tides will not move from one place to another but ocean currents move from one place to another next types of ocean currents the first is based on their depth so we have the surface one and the depth ones so first is surface currents so as the name says surface current they form part of only the first 400 meters of the ocean top ocean water surface and 
they are only the 10 percentage of the ocean currents okay and remaining 90 percentage is of the deep water currents okay which are particularly colder than the surface water currents they move from one place to another because of the particularly temperature difference gravity okay Coriolis force etc okay so 10 percentage is surface currents and 90 percentage of the ocean currents constitute deep water currents okay and the next uh, classification of uh, ocean currents on the basis of temperature as the name says temperature first contribution by the solar energy is for ocean currents only the most uh, highest factor in movement of ocean currents is solar energy only so first category under the basis of temperature is cold water currents or cold currents okay generally they are at the colder regions or polar regions at the equatorial region the temperature is high right we have an earth so this is the equatorial region you have the temperature high at the polar regions at the mid latitudes or polar regions we have very lower temperatures okay so particularly you can see at the higher latitudes okay and these currents are found generally on the west coast of the continents in the low and middle currents. this is very important so where these cold water currents are found generally they are found on the west coast of the low, at low altitude means at the equator particularly and middle latitudes from 0 to 90 we have from equator to poles right so low altitude and mid latitude sorry low latitude and mid latitude we have these cold water currents on the west coast of the continents when we go to the polar regions or the higher latitudes we have the cold water currents on east coast of the continents you have to remember this i'll tell you how this is possible and next the categorization based on temperature is obviously warm currents so generally they are found on the east coast of low and mid latitudes on the higher latitudes it is found on the west coast okay so understood next see we can see the ocean currents so these are the ocean currents you can see one equatorial current right equatorial current is moving from west to east it is always warm current because it is in equatorial region and remain you can see the uh, western coast and eastern coast we have some ocean currents so because of the temperature these are formed the general examples are labrador current is a cold water current gulf current is a hot water current or hot sorry warm current okay so these are the general examples you have to remember whether, whether they are warm or cold suppose if they say uh, which is lab, labrador current it is a cold current generally it is at the higher latitudes yes or no it is on the eastern coast of the north america yes at the high latitudes so these are some of the currents i have uh, made into a table so you have to remember them and go through the pictorial diagram so that you can get the picture of how the currents are rotating clear with this yes so waves tides and ocean currents waves and ocean currents are horizontal movement and tides are vertical movement and waves and tides doesn't move to any point they have they just move in a circular direction but ocean current move from one place to another okay so this is all from this topic i'll meet you in the next topics thank you